Good afternoon. This video will continue on looking at uh, uh, the work uh, by um, Kyle Stevens, building thereupon how sound faith and good doctrine are properly laid. Now, the thesis of the book is very good because you have to build doctrine upon doctrine, precept upon precept, doctrine upon doctrine. First four chapters are fine. It deals with uh, the problems that the church has had being attacked by philosophy and undermining the uh, confidence in, in the uh, in the uh, Bible and finally ultimately in the uh, 1611 uh, edition uh, which was given to uh, the English speaking people and many of the people uh, who defend the 1611 really defend the Texas Receptus uh, that underlies it and uh, which is true which is you just went back to the Greek, and uh, so you're really not getting any certainty of words. Now, in this book on the uh, certainty of, of words, Kyle, Kyle makes a point that Greek and Hebrew words have multiple meanings. That's the point. And so they do in English. He makes a big point here in the, in the, uh, King Jane, in the, uh, the Christian life. You have an issue of standing in state. Standing is your salvation. And this is the big difference between many denominations. The issue of standing is permanent. Your state changes constantly in our fellowship. These guys do reject the idea that Old Testament saints had the same thing. Not exactly the same thing, but the same thing because they were saved. Now, when you read these people, When you read what these guys have to say, it is so amazing and astounding that they think they can get away with it. It boggles the mind. The sloppiness by which they use terms and words is incredible. Hoping to deceive people. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Robert Breaker and Gene Kim and Hoffman, his reference Bible. And a whole bunch of other guys out there, Wolfhand, I can't think of names. You have Morton, Tim Morton teaches this. this uh, Sam Gibb is now teaching it. What they have, to, what they're trying to tell you, now listen to this. They're telling you the Old Testament saint had nothing done to them when they were saved. So how could they be saved? Because they want to look at the uniqueness of the church age, they want to throw out anything that happened relative, uh, uh, that was relative to the, the issue of, of, of what happened on the cross that could be applied to the Old Testament saint. They will actually say that nothing happened to an Old Testament saint when he got saved. Then how could he be saved? How could he be a friend with God if he has no human spirit? He'll make a point here to my first Corinthians 2 uh, 214. Oh, you have you have to have human spirit, the anthropology with both we have a dichotomy, we're born, we're spiritually dead, physically alive. Well, how does the Old Testament say he can have a relationship with God if he's not regenerated? They weren't born again. They weren't born again, which is what regeneration is. How can they be then how can they be saved? Oh, they were going to Abraham's bosom. Yeah, because Christ wasn't done yet. Oh, they didn't have their sins. They won't redeem their sins once again. Yeah, they were covered. Oh, that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy. That's a prophecy. They lied, right? This is an attack. Look, the, the, the fact is, this is a direct attack on King James Bible believers who are dispensationalists. This is a satanic attack on King James Bible believers because these are these are King James Bible believers, and when you get Robert Break and these guys will say, "Oh, I I I I I, I'm, I actually we actually read the King James Bible." Well, that's why I had to turn that real King James Bible believers, real King James Bible. See, if you don't believe that that nonsense. The Old Testament saints didn't have some of the things. Apply to them from the course, regeneration, uh, uh, justification, righteousness, 
some of the things had to be applied to them. Or they weren't even saved. Did they receive everything we received? That has to do with our work. They didn't receive every, every individual didn't receive the indwelling Holy Spirit. We know that. But that doesn't deal with, that, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't do with our, our, our personal salvation either. It has to deal with our walk. That's why we have two natures. That's our, our walk issue. It's not a salvation issue. Because our walk is different, we're going to get, uh, every believer gets indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because each individual believer now is part of the body of Christ. So it's, there are differences, but that doesn't mean that, that the uh, Old Testament saints lost their salvation. Remember what uh, Norton says, if one of those things were true, one, you, they couldn't lose the salvation. So now you're going to throw everything out. They didn't receive righteousness. You can righteousness. Job says, I, I, I know I've seen my, uh, uh, my redeemer uh, live. In Job 19.25, he says, you believe in redemption? This hasn't happened yet. They want you to believe. They have to say, Breaker goes as far as saying, these guys weren't even saved. That's what they want you to believe. So he has on page 105, conversion may be viewed as a general term that encompasses all the manifold operations that the God achieves in saving a sin. The term is used in one form or other five times in the Old Testament and nine times in the New Testament. That is most interesting to us is a remarkable statement of Jesus Christ in Luke 22, 32 and Simon Peter. But I pray, pray for, thee, for thee that they, thy faith fail not. And when thou, thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. They're talking about Peter getting saved. Peter's already saved man. How do we know that from, from John 13? He was, he was clean. They had to be born to the church age. They didn't understand that. But he was saved man. He was saved under a different gospel. He had to be born to the church age. He hadn't been dropped the Holy Spirit. He hadn't been dropped the Holy Spirit yet. He had, and then the films, and he had learned about that stuff, that all these things. But he's the same man, John 13. All the, your, your, and Peter said, you know, wash my head and my feet. At the first time to stop Christ from washing his feet, he said, no, you're, everything's pure except your feet. That's the walk. Peter certainly believed in a, certainly believed uh, at, at such a late hour, Christ pronounces to one of the chief apostles that he's not converted. Because he's doubting Christ in, in going to the cross and doubting him. That's why they all fled. They split. They all split apart. They thought, they thought Christ had failed. Then he recognized, no, he succeeded. But in, in, in the uh, Acts 2, Christ of uh, 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 Peter is not preaching a salvation message, a salvation message uh, that that uh, Paul preaches in uh, Acts thirteen. He's preaching a, a messianic gospel message. They say, "What must what must we do?" And he says, "Separate from the Jews, because wrath is about to come on the Jews for killing their Messiah." Peter certainly believed in upon the law of the Lord Jesus Christ and heaven to any reader he that he truly and deeply loved him. Yeah, he had to be saved. It was doctrinally accurate to say that Peter was as converted as it was possible for man to be at the moment he received the startling announcement. Well, he saved not. He's a saved man. The Lord said he was a saved in John 13. Plainly, though, uh, uh, Christ intimidated. Intimidated, uh, changes soon to come upon a rendered conversion of a variety known prior to Calvary. Uh, conversion of a variety known prior to Calvary and the resurrection obsolete. Yeah, he's entering into the dispensation, the church age. Then the church age. So there's going to be a, a gospel based on what the, the course that occurred. Now, 
the gospel is going to deal with Jesus Christ, believe and believe on him as at the, the suffering lamb. They have waiting for they're waiting for Jesus Christ as the conquering Messiah. The salvation enjoyed by God's people prior to the work of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit is very different affair than those than that enjoyed by church age Christians once the Holy Ghost came upon Pentecost. Well, there's a transition. They didn't even know about that. They were offering a second offer. That Israel could have converted as a nation. As a nation, if they had received uh, the Messiah. But they didn't. Uh, those things now uh, in place and in effect in the life of, of Christians are, are what we are describing outlining the chapter John 7 30. Oh, yeah, it's just coming the Holy Spirit. No question about that. That's unique to church age. But it doesn't throughout the Old Testament salvation. Because the issue of the church age in dwelling and the walk and the two natures is part of the, the growth status is, is being in union with Christ. It's a walk. It's the state. It's not the standing. They didn't have to have the indwelling of, Jesus, of, the, of the Holy Spirit to be saved. That's part of our walk. We do because there's no temple anymore. God has made the individual the temple. And he's building up his body, the bride. Uh, let's see. Faithful men believe and trust in the Lord, and he often did wonderful works in them and through them. Nevertheless, men were not, were not born again. You know the thing they're talking about the, you know, anthropology. What happened when Adam died? He died immediately physically. He died immediately spiritually. So you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't be uh, saved unless you have a spiritual nature. That means born, born again. Getting out of the line of Adam. Uh, nor were they permanent. Nor were they permanently interrupted by the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. So what? What's that doing with anything? That's his way of walk. That deals with our walk. It deals with the, a relationship, unique relationship the church has with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ. But it doesn't mean that the Old Testament saints weren't saved. Nor at the time did rivers of living work for the believers' belly. So what? The glories of salvation to be highlighted in this chapter utterly unprecedented prior to Christ's victory over sin and death and the Holy Ghost coming. See, they can't, they can't, they can't deal with the fact that you can have one, you can have both. It's, it, one is not negating it's the other. One doesn't negate the other. The Old Testament saints did not have the permanent dwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit come and go on. We saw it from Samson. Not every individual believer saved had the Holy Spirit. They didn't need it. They had temples to go to. We do. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. But they have eternal security depending on other things. As it sees in John, uh, John 10. The Father held him in his hand. They had the Good Shepherd. Psalm 23. Now here we go with this same old nonsense. Page 106. Noah found grace with God. Genesis 6 8. But he still had to build a boat. His salvation didn't depend on building a boat. That is eternal salvation. His physical salvation didn't. Now notice you see. They can't separate two concepts. They can't separate a physical salvation and eternal salvation. They can't separate a physical, uh, a, uh, a righteousness dealing with a walk and a righteousness dealing with eternal life uh, or eternal uh, salvation. They can't separate the two. And they constantly make this, this, this mistake. It's like, oh no, everything they see salvation has to do with eternal salvation. The Old Testament. Everything. And of course, they do the same thing. In the millennium, they look at them and say, well, there's no, see, it's unseen. There's no walking by sight. In that. So what? The issue is being fully persuaded. 
That's where faith comes from. They want the Hebrews 11, 1. But we see the definition in, in Romans. Being fully persuaded is what gives a show you give it gives you faith. You trust in being yeah, I'm fully persuaded. I'm, what I'm seeing here is the truth. Many miracles that happen in the gospels fully persuaded people and they believe. Abraham's faith was like ours, counted counted to him for righteousness. Genesis 15, 6. They're going to tell you in the next minute that nothing happened to Abraham. But here we see righteousness. What are you talking about? But Abraham still had to circumcise his sons or they would not be in the covenant. So what? Covenant has nothing to do with their salvation. Eternal salvation. It has to do with their walk. Jews and the Lord are put to the trust in the Lord, but they also have to offer the tabernacle, offer the tabernacle of temple sacrifices. Yes, so what? That was the cover of sins. And they do it their salvation, eternal salvation. What did they do with it? And various sins, name of the law, eating blood, Sabbath breaking, murder, idols, could lead a man to be cut off. Here's the big thing, cut off. And he would die in his sins, yeah. John 8, 21, iniquities. Ezekiel 3, 18 through 20. Which just meant he died physical death. Does that worry about a good person going to hell? Um, it is clear and evident from the mouth, here's the page, uh, New Birth, from the mouth of the Son of God that one of the indispensable components of salvation is a new birth. Then why do you keep calling these people saved if they didn't have a new birth? How are you walking with God if you have a new birth? Did Enoch have a new birth? He walked with God and then was not? Noah was walking with God. How are you walking with God if you don't have a new birth? Enoch, you're still under Satan. Yeah, move here. Page uh, 116. Righteousness and his imputation. There's one, is imputation. There's another one. He has like 12 things that happened at the cross. Morton had eight. Morton said, if any of these things happen, you couldn't lose your salvation. Where's the imputation? They see something. They had something happen to him. Um, let's see. It is also profound that Abraham's belief, faith, is how he acquired righteousness from God. It was imputed to him. <laughs> by faith. And that's when he was justified, by the way. That's when he was justified. Funny, he goes to, uh, into Genesis uh, 17. Most of these guys run to Genesis 22. Which is a friendship. It's a walk. It's standing versus a state. Page uh, 119. F righteousness and salvation are the another time frames. The irre irreversible fact of imputed righteousness during the church age, along with the other di distinctive details of this chapter, places church age salvation into a category all of its own. Against it. The church age is unique. No one's arguing against that. But you don't have to throw out the Old Testament to do it. Because all Workman did was look at all the Old Testament, the, 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 the uh, sec eternal security passages, and say, well, this, these guys can't all be wrong, so what we'll do is we'll just put them in another dispensation and say they didn't have eternal security. That's all he did. All those guys can't be wrong. He lists about 50 denominations. They can't all be wrong about that. But we'll do those to protect church age eternal security. We'll just accept the fact. We'll concede the fact that, oh, yeah, those guys could all lose. There's no eternal security in the Old Testament or tribulation. That's what we did. 
And all his students have been going with that since then. You don't believe me. <laughs> you don't believe me. Yeah, I got, I got the books. I got to read the, 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 uh, the writing. That's his logic. That was the logic that started all this. They all here can't be wrong. He's got Methodists up there, you know, Armenians up there, you know, Quakers, okay, Catholics, he got, you know, and Catholics don't even, you know, say, you know, Quakers don't say, but groups, I mean, he's got everybody, every group mishmashed in that, that's a denomination. So, well, you know, can't be wrong. <laughs> well, they are. Because they, they find passages that would, you say, well, you know, they're wrong about these certain new passages, uh, church age uh, uh, passages. And he can throw up, he can see Hebrews. Hebrews are no dispensation. James, yes, that's, done, that's, that's written to the, you know, 12 tribes. Such a statement is violently disputed by, by most groups of Christians, including uh, many King James Version defending fundamentalists. See? Now, we'll record, well, now, according to guys like Walker, we'll call it revised. we we'll revised. We're not in the line of defending the King James Bible and true dispensationalism. We'll call it to revise. That's what the, um, who he's called. They call him now. Uh, I don't know what's his name. Uh, name. Uh, so we're considered to revise. We're the ones breaking off. The right, they, they rightly point to the fact that grace and elements of faith and trust. Elements, I see. They rightly point to the fact that grace and elements, elements of faith and trust in God are common attributes in all dispensations. Now, lest I read is that it's either faith or works in Romans. If it's by works, it's not of grace. If it's by grace, it's not of works. So how do you mix them? That's a non New Testament statement. That's an absolute statement. They don't mix. This will be elaborated upon in the upcoming sections of the book, but certain traits uh, being common in other dispensational errors does not answer for dissimilarities. Dis, dis, uh, they don't have to. Yeah, the, uh, the differences are based on the walk. You don't have to be indwelt the Holy Spirit to be saved in the other dispensations. That wasn't a necessity. Samson did not lose his salvation just because the Holy Spirit left him. David would not have lost his salvation. If the Holy Spirit had left him, he would have lost the joy of his salvation. Uh, no, this address the profoundly richer spiritual benefits we have in Christ. So, yeah, we know the richest benefits we have to that. We do, we know that. But they got to say, well, because there's such great benefits and there's a church age, they couldn't have had this, 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 in the Old Testament. And the tribulation people, they can't have that. They, they got work. They had a faith work system and that's impossible. It goes against the attributes of God. He goes on to a uh, propitiation. Then there's an appeasement between two parties and enmity. No, propitiation is, is one person being satisfied. The Father was satisfied. It wasn't two people. Jesus Christ was a propitiator, and the Father was being propitiated. He says it's an appeasement. No, that's not what propitiation isn't. It is. One person needed to be satisfied. And because the Father was satisfied, now we can reconciliation is from our point where we can be reconciled because the Father was propitiated. And that's what the resurrection proved. The efficacy of the propitiation. So he's found up on propitiation. It is not appeasement between two parties. It is the satisfaction of one party, the Father, whose wrath, his justice, was satisfied by what the Son did, by paying the price. The imputation of the sins going to him on the cross. And because he took the sins, he paid for the sins, the father said, propitiate. He was he was propitiated. 
And that's, again, that's what the resurrection proved. If, if that hadn't happened, the resurrection wouldn't have happened. But only, one, only, the, only God had to be uh, propitiated. Because it was the justice of God that had to be, his demands had to be met. And in this case, it was the father sending, having the son on the cross and him, it was part of the plan, him being propitiated by what the, the son was willing to accept. And in case this, this case, the son had a body which bore the sins of the world. So it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a appeasement. It's not appeasement between two parties. Not in the case of the cross. Propitiation meant the father had to be satisfied. The wrath of God had to be satisfied for the work of the cross. Uh, another word for such peace, peacemaking is reconciliation. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. The reconciliation is because of the propitiation. They're two separate issues. Reconciliation can only happen because of propitiation. Regeneration. Regeneration born again is synonymous with one another. Now remember, he, he's going to have a chapter in here talking about the anthropology of man. You're born spiritually dead. How can, how can Old Testament saints be walking with God, talking with God, have a relationship with God if they're spiritually dead? Page 128. Righteousness, precepts that are built upon the regeneration of the sinner, okay? And he always mentions eternal security topic here, which is true. He's all, we said, we saw the eight things that in, in unity form a, a bond of eternal security. He had more things on, he'd have an even a stronger bond. But Old Testament saints had some of them, they had imputation, they had righteousness, they had justification. They hadn't been redeemed yet because the sins had been paid for. The sins have been forgiven, but not paid for yet. So certain things historically had to happen. Of course, that's why we were going to Abraham's bosom. So those things, for, uh, they could be, of course, paid for. Then they could be taken out of Abraham's bosom. And they make a big deal about that. This didn't happen. That didn't happen. It never happened. Yeah, we know that those things didn't happen. But they went to Abraham's bosom because they were saved. And some things did happen to them in order to be saved. He says here, uh, now righteousness before God is acquired by faith alone. Yeah, in every dispensation. The idea that righteous deeds and merits should follow. Yeah, there's your standing in state. Standing in state. Every dispensation has standing in state. You're standing, you're saved eternally, and your state is your walk. How your relationship is operating. And God had different ways of handling the walk. In other dispensational times, though God's grace and mercy were always necessarily involved, grace, grace, yeah, that means no works. That means no works to get saved. And that's what Romans, uh, he was 11 is talking about. By faith they did this, by faith they did this, by faith they did this. That was their walk. Uh, see, uh, of since righteousness and practice did contribute uh, to his standing. See, his standing. No, it, it contributed to his state, not his standing. This, this is where they break down. It didn't contribute to his standing. It contributed to his state, his maturity. That's why Abraham was called a friend of God. That was his state. His spiritual state, his spiritual maturity. His standing was his salvation, eternal salvation, which was settled. You can't mix you can't mix that up and try to say it's part of his eternal security. I mean it's part of his eternal salvation. Are you a lunatic? Not grasping the unwavering precept of salvation by faith alone now versus salvation by the interplay of faith and works then. 
past and the future results in biblical doctrine that tears itself apart. No, it's your guys who are telling yourself the, the, the dispensation will tear apart with your double talking nonsense. Double talking lying nonsense. That an Old Testament state couldn't have could have a standing versus a state status status, just as we do under different conditions. They're coming after you. They're not coming after the NIV believers. They're not coming after the New Muckin Standard believers. They're not coming after non-dispensationalists. They're not coming. After, they're coming after King James Bible dispensationalists, who they want to infiltrate with their stupid moronic smiles and haughty attitudes and pompous nonsense, and hope you get us too stupid to check up on everything. That's what they're hoping. With Gene Kim is going, I can I can handle this one hand behind my back, you know. Robert Baker, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I actually I actually read the King James Bible. See? All of them, how how uh, uh, you know? No, no, no. Who's this? These video makers, just you know, who that? You don't believe me? Get the book. You're too lazy. And you have to be deceived in thinking that a faith work system, God would ever allow a faith work system to have involved in a person's standing. When if you read Ruckman's own writing, he says there's a work system set up in a New Testament believer. Because the faith produces the works. Because he can't be consistent in anything. And that's in his Romans brief 13. Footnote. As New Testament believers, we tend to read the we are you, are you, yeah, I get so upset about this. I really get upset about this though. Because I see people out there, you should see the comments like. Oh, Robert Blake, he, he's a great teacher. Oh, Gene Kim is a great teacher. Oh, this guy's a great teacher. Oh, that guy's a great teacher. Oh, just read what they have to say and then tell me what you know about the Bible doctrine that in your right mind you would think that these people weren't saved in the Old Testament just because they have differences. And what they do is they set up a straw man. They say, oh, these old, you know, past, you know, these old pastors, you know, they would say they these guys got saved by looking forward to the course and everything. You know, so they, they hammer on that. Well, ah, that's so stupid, that's ridiculous. You know, and then they go with the whole thing and saying all the various things that are different that they could, you know, the church age group has. Well, it doesn't mean God wasn't looking forward to the cross. Well, how these guys got saved, they got saved and their walk was different. But they had a walk. And they said, well, see, every time they died, you know, they were cut off, they die in their sins, and they make to try to make the issue of uh, well, I see that. You know, they lost their salvation. They didn't lose their salvation. So they lose their salvation. They're at the same place Jonathan went to. As New Testament believers, we tend to read a New Testament concept and revelations backwards into Old Testament passages. No, we read exactly what the Old Testament passage is talking about. So you guys want to yank them out and make them, make them prophecies like you do with uh, David. When he says the sins will be covered. He's not even talking about New Testament. He says the sins will be covered. Blessed is the man whose sins are imputed to him, but his sins are covered. It's not a New Testament prophecy. So we naturally read redemption in Psalms or even Leviticus and apply it to our grasp of New Testament salvation. His sins were forgiven. They were redeemed. Job says, I know my demon liveth. Know, I know my redeemer liveth. He was redeemed. But the price hasn't been paid yet, uh, paid for yet. So he had to go to Abraham's bosom. Devotionally, that is acceptable in many contextual settings and serves as a comfort and exhortation to us. That notwithstanding the idea of a complete and wholesale purchase of and redemption from every sin on behalf of every man is not a concept that those in the Old Testament understood. We didn't say they understood it. We didn't say they understood it. They have a complete pattern of scripture. But doesn't this, because this, they didn't understand, doesn't mean it didn't happen. Some in, in, in Acts chapter 2, they entered the church, they entered into the body of Christ, 3,000 believers. 
They didn't understand it, but it happened. They sent me for Sua as a, a sin bearer, yeah, Isaiah 53, and a Messiah, Deuteronomy 18.15. They also knew that there would be reconciliation for sin, Jeremiah 50.20 and Isaiah 40.1-2. In the future, but the idea of comprehensive or inclusive redemption being presently available for every personal sin was not conceptualized. So what? It doesn't matter if they conceptualized every detail. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. That the redemption, they understood that there would be a redemption. And they began looking for the redemption of Israel. Israel. John the Baptist was doing that redemption of Israel as a nation. The Messianic kingdom. Men prior to Jesus Christ's sacrifice in Calvary could be and many were forgiven. Nevertheless, they were not cleared of their sins. And we said they were. But they were forgiven. How could they be forgiven? How are they forgiven? Because the God, God saw the cross. And he covered them. He covered them. Prior to Calvary, Abraham and Lazarus were among those named as being there, along with Samuel. Yeah, he went to Gabriel's bosom. And many unnamed Old Testament saints. Saints, you know what's saints? The saints are saved. Robert Breaker, you know, the great genius, Robert Breaker, he didn't have to tell you those people weren't even saved. Until Jesus Christ came, came in there and preached the gospel to them. Yeah, genius. They rested there until the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood, which descended into the lower parts of the earth, rose, rose from the dead, and led those saints, saints, saved people, saints, to heaven. They were forgiven, their sins were not clear, so what? They were covered. That's why they were never in his bosom. They were not paid for in full. They were covered until the cross. What is so hard for you to grasp? They still had a standing and state issue. They were saved. They were saints. The modern equivalent to credit. Yes. Yes, it was credit. But it was God's credit. That means it was very good credit. It was going to get paid. Page 147. Though Abraham, Moses, and David all enjoyed spiritual privileges. Spiritual. How do you get spiritual pri privileges if you don't have a spiritual nature? Now remember, they're attacking us as being idiots. Keep that in mind. I get guys at Jack Smack. Ed thinks he's the police, you know. What he Jack Smack thinks tells anybody they're going to hell. These guys writing stuff, these these King James Bible fundamentalists or revised dispensationalists, they just don't know what they're talking about. They just don't know what they're talking about, you know, and they just don't understand, and, you know, this didn't happen because they believe that Old Testament saints actually had eternal security, and they didn't, and they had to have their walk. It, it was it affected their standing. When it's impossible, it's impossible. No one, no one would make that man's bosom. Has spiritual privileges in their own right, how blessed and distinct from the blessings and is our blessing. Yeah, our blessings are distinct. It doesn't mean theirs didn't exist. Just because ours are different doesn't mean theirs didn't exist. Can you imagine people being so obtuse? Can you imagine that? <laughs> it just it just astounds me. But this is guy has been doctrinated. Let's see, I had something in here. Let me see. Oh, here, there's missing. High points of justification in Christ. Uh, miss some here. Uh, in Ezekiel 18, 9, God says he is just regarding a man who walked in the Lord's statutes and kept his judgments. God declared him just who kept the law and made the appropriate sacrifices according to Mosaic law. Ezekiel is talking about cursing and blessing of a land, of, of, of uh, who's, who's going to be kept 
captain who's going to be lost, lose their lives. I don't do people losing their salvation. Um, there are individual cases, uh, cases where the uh, Lord made exception to the standard, as he did when David uh, with David. Uh, but every man did not enjoy the latitude that God allowed for David. He forgave David's sins, a sin of adultery and murder. But the short mercies of David had to deal with the line, Second Samuel uh, 12, I think, that his line wouldn't be cut off like Saul's line was. That's what that had to do, the genealogy, that this Messiah would come through David's genealogy. I do it uh, keeping David eternal security. David wasn't killed, but he was punished. Though he lived prior to the law, Abraham's faith was counted unto him for righteousness. So he did receive something. I think I think I'll tell you that he, did, he received nothing. However, Abraham and his sons were required to be physically circumcised, or else they broke God's covenant. So what? They didn't, didn't God send them to hell. The covenant was made to show their faith. And that the the, the line, because uh, Abraham had a sexual death and he had sexual renewal. So the circumcision showed that. And therefore, the line was coming through that. The Messiah was coming through that line. And you had to get in, in that line. That's the line that God was going to use now. He narrowed the line from a broad Gentile line to a line now that was going to be a circumcised line, which is going to be the Jews. That's what that was showing. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And do the eternal salvation. However, Abraham and his sons were required to be physically circumcised. Uh, John the Baptist, mother and father, both, both righteous before God, for walking. Walking, walking is not the is not the standard. Walking is the state. In all commandments and ordinances, God blames. They weren't sinless, but they were doing the ordinances and commandments correctly. But Zechariah didn't believe the angel when he came and told him. Yeah, that's where he was moved for a while into the birth. So you can be perfect in the sense of following the ordinances correctly, perfectly. Which showed you believed them. Standing in state. Page 151. A believer is justified now. Uh... Let's see, page 150. It does not say that the Lord never justified a sin on the basis of deeds of the Lord. It says that the present there shall be no uh, 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 flesh justified by the law. Now he's saying, okay, he's, he's saying that the law never justified a sin on the basis of deeds of the law. That you could be justified by the law. Yeah, you're insane. When Paul says the law was always meant to show a person that he couldn't keep it, are you kidding me? I believe it's justified now. Our justification and salvation is about now uh, very much present pos uh, possessions for born again Christians. Yeah, so is theirs. <laughs> That's why he called them saved people. Abraham was saved in Genesis 15. Saved. And by him, all that believe are justified for more things. Acts 13, what is Acts 13, 13, I'll say. Let's see, Acts he hasn't. He doesn't quote the whole verse. Interesting. Thirteen. The ghost is going to say something that goes against what they have to. They try to pull off on you. Thirteen thirty-nine. And by him, all that believe are justified from more things uh, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. He lifts out. He's going to tell you that people could be justified by the law of Moses because they were following the ordinances which were ceremonial perfectly. That, that had to do with the sin issue. That was not working for salvation. 
those are things basically you're just doing in order to show your faith as part of where you were placed in, in the uh, uh, part of the tribes, where you were placed and what you had to do uh, as part of the work you had to do in the uh, in that uh, system, the bunch of temple, if you're a Levite. Uh, let's see. Something else in there. Hmm. I can't believe it. Mark this. Now I've got a bunch of things here that, you know, spiritual circumcision and, and things that happen unique to the church. In Christ, yeah, in Christ, in union with Christ, because we're part of the body of Christ. So when you're in union with Christ, bear with Christ, is in Christ. Maybe something else has. Okay, and uh, page 196, this is, in short, it is the other completeness and finality of the church age, saints standing in Christ and his position in God's right sight that wholly distinguishes him from every other category of God's people from the past. True. But that doesn't mean they have another standing. Present or future, among the whole family of God. They were the family of God. Their standing was different, that's all. We were in union with Jesus Christ. They were part of the family. We're the bride. Among the whole family of God and within the uh, entirety of the house. How could be, you know, how are they going to be part of the family of God if they're not saved? If they're not, if they have some aspects of salvation, like spiritual rebirth, uh, let's see. Born again, child of God, stands unique in all the spiritual and eternal blessings and attributes bestowed upon him by our Father and our Lord. Noah, Abraham, David, and others who went before us are uh, appointed out by the scriptures as beacons of faith, labor, humility, mercy, and faithfulness to us that follow them. Abraham's imputed righteousness by faith alone, Romans 4.22, had a wonderful, has wondrous application to us today. No, it happened to him in Genesis 15. Yeah, we apply it to us today. Because it happened to him. He's, he's our representative of faith alone. That's what the, the, the Romans talks about. It. When did this thing happen? Before circumcision or after circumcision? Before circumcision. So it's for, it wasn't just for Jews. It's for Gentiles. In the short measures of David, we easily foresee that we know today is eternal security. No, we don't. Eternal security isn't the short measures of David. The mercies of David had to deal with the airship of who was the line of where the Messiah was coming from. These are wonderful types and similarities to us are short blessings, but the outlines of chapter 6 in a, uh, church, age, uh, church Age Salvation provided below shows how much more an expansive and complete outstanding is than to any other t st saint. Oh, there's a saint. Here we go again. Enjoy. No one says this, denies that. That we know more than they knew. That doesn't mean that nothing was done to us, or nothing was done to them. And uh, 
Let me see here. Let's see. You know, page 198. You'll see here. Uh, So about the circumcision not done by hands, okay, uh, versus the physical circumcision, which, yeah, it's a whole different thing. Okay. Beyond that, neither Abraham nor any of Old, uh, Old Testament progeny were born again. No, they had to be born again. You can't be saved without being born again. Regenerated. You can go to what you want. Part of the body of Christ, yeah, we know that. Seed in, in Christ, yeah, we know that. Or sealed by the Spirit, yeah, we know that. What's that do with their eternal salvation? What's that do with their salvation in eternal security? Nothing. Nor, nor were they new creatures, as they were not crucified, buried, and resurrected with, resurrected with Christ. The fact of the matter is, they were saved by what they were told to be saved for, and what Christ did on the cross saved them. Dr. Ruckman says in this way, nothing happened to Abraham when he believed God. Nothing happened to him. He didn't receive imputation, imputation of righteousness. Absolutely nothing. He was not regenerated. Okay. He was not spiritually circumcised. Now we agree with that. But that's a church age issue. They had no deal with their salvation. He was not put into Christ's body. Yeah, so what? You have to be in Christ's body in order to be saved. Being part of Christ's body is an issue of being the bride. His sins were not taken away. His sins were covered. His sins were not paid for, redeemed. Not yet. They would be. He was not adopted into God's family. Yes, they were. They were part of the family of God. They just want his sons. And his soul resided in paradise. He went in his bosom until Matthew 27. Was Abraham a prime example for us in the way of faith? Absolutely. Was he a deeply inspiring friend of God? Friend of God. How do you need to be a friend of God if you're not regenerated? If you're not born again? How does that happen? Without question. Are there necessary lessons for the Christian life to be learned from him? Yeah, well, everything from the Old Testament you can learn from. Because they're saved people. They're saved people you learn from. Certainly, nevertheless, the New Testament Christian has an eternal standing with God through Jesus Christ's finished labors that is unprecedented among categories of saints. He said it was unprecedented. But their standing was still there. They still had a standing, and it was based on what happened at the cross. And their, their, and their state, their walk was different. And it's unique and privileged relationship. Relationship, exactly. It's a unique and privileged relationship. It's a walk issue. It was a walk issue. Now I'm going to, here's a, he cites uh, from uh, Buckman's Death of Bible Doctrine. That's, the, that's what he's saying. That nothing happened to him. These guys know what the word nothing means. Sound doctrine, false doctrine, Old Testament, New Testament, doc salvation. All major Christian sources of higher education have, the, have been promoting the heresy of Old, that Old Testament and New Testament salvation are identical. No, see? You see how clever they wrote that? We never said they're identical. We said that by faith alone, the standing. We said there were certain things happened to them that had to happen to them to be saved. But our, our, our state was different. The things that happened to us, being put in union with Jesus Christ and the adoption of sons and the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that's our walk. And our special relationship that we would be heavenly people was unique to the church. But that doesn't mean nothing happened to the Old Testament saints and that you can put in a work system. They've been doing it some, uh, since somewhere around 1850. 
<laughs> no one ever bought the idea of a faith work system in the Old Testament. Only a lunatic would. Are you disregarding the fact that there are two different testaments? Yeah, we know that. Now he's going to talk about dispensationalists. See, they say if you, if you disagree with them, you have dispensationalists. And our Bible reader, a uh, believer. You're going to see it goes on here. Uh, in some of the in the Old Testament, New Testament. Okay. Then sloppy way of privately interpreting the scripture came from refusal of the 19th century Christian leaders to rightly divide the word of truth. If they had, they would have found seven different covenants. Uh, they certainly uh, would uh, should have observed them, for they altered the word testament to covenant, and blah, blah, blah. Any reader with an IQ of 90 could see that Adam and Eve had a covenant of works before they fell. Oh, it wasn't a covenant of works. It wasn't a covenant of works. They were told not to do something. Yeah. They, did, they did it, and then they went into an issue now of grace. It wasn't a covenant of works. So a covenant of, you know, if anything, you say a covenant of obedience. It's just a, you know, you have to say, don't eat from that tree. And they broke that. But grace didn't start the, the fall. It didn't start in the garden. It started in the fall. Because they didn't need grace. They were perfect. They were complete. Um... Neither of them walk by faith a day in their lives. So what? We're not doing anything. That's a walk. That's a walk. That's the state. They walk by sight, as all converts will do for a thousand years after the tribulation. Uh, that's now you about the millennium. No. I mean... They'll have evidence. I mean, they, they reject the evidence. He's got a footnote on there. That's how people will be divided and they rebel. They reject the evidence. And so they rebel at the end of the millennium. They have no faith. They're not persuaded by the evidence. No one in the millennium is saved by faith or justified by faith. Yes, they are. They're being fully persuaded. They have the faith in the evidence. You sit on a jury trial. You have the faith in the evidence. Evidence is presented to you and you have the faith in it. You got to believe it. Uh, Abraham wasn't under Mosaic Covenant. Okay. A liar has to have a good memory. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A liar, a liar shouldn't write books. Who we'll make videos? David's sure mercies. They always leave out where sure mercies begin. Second, the second Samuel seven fifteen. They want to go to uh, Isaiah 53, 55, 3 and Acts thirteen thirty four. How to, to deal with the sure mercies? How to deal with the uh, and that's what they're talking about. They had to deal with the that line. Jesus Christ was in that line of David. Couldn't be cut off that line because of the sure mercies of David. He wouldn't, uh, unlike Saul. Uh, how spiritually the New Testament, however, if any biblical literal would insist that they were for everyone, not just David, he would catch himself in a bear trap. It was David who was worrying about losing the Holy Spirit. See, if they go back to the Holy Spirit, they felt the whole being uh, having the Holy Spirit in them. That was a feeling. It would not have, he would not have changed his salvation. It would, have, it would have changed his walk and his appreciation of his walk, his joy in his walk. But now it would not have changed his salvation. This is a sleight of hand, people. And they know it. They know what Larkin told on this. They know what Schofield told on this. They know it. Is that your salvation after Calvary? David had seen Saul lose the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he didn't lose his salvation. He lost his mind. <laughs> and he read about Samson losing, losing, uh, uh, losing the Holy Spirit and getting it back. Funny how that worked, huh? <laughs> you know, Samson loses the Holy Spirit, but he gets it back. It's his final days. That's why he's a hero of faith. 
for what he did. And the Holy Spirit was inside those men at times because the Holy, Holy Spirit was said to be inside. Now, so what? They were inside. The Holy Spirit was inside them, not on them. And he wasn't in dwelling, in a permanent dwelling. And so, what's the difference? Someone in America has been teaching two heresies to more than 100,000, 10,000 ministerial students, uh, students since 1901. So let's go to uh, page 29. Abraham and the grace before the law could not get redeemed, nor could his sins be taken away. They could be covered. And they would be redeemed. Abraham was not justified two years after he got his imputed righteousness. Justified before who? Hoffman even says there's two perceptions to that. Scofield taught the same thing. One before God, one before man. He was receiving pure righteousness, and therefore God had to say justified. And the justification that occurred in Genesis 22 was before God and before man. Showing! Showing to man his relationship with God. Abraham was saved, quote unquote. Oh, he could be saved without anything happening to him. Was saved Genesis 15, 6, but uh, was not justified to Genesis 22. So you're saying God's righteousness was in Abraham, but God never justified him until Genesis 22. But I guess he must have chosen to create after that. Huh? Did he have a chance to create after that? Abraham on the grace before the law was not born again. He wasn't. He had no spiritual life. He had no spiritual, uh, spiritual, uh, holy, he didn't have a spirit, human spirit. Nor was he spiritually circumcised. Well, we know that. You see how they mix it, people? The conflation? You didn't have two natures. Well, so what? No saint in the Old Testament, uh, 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 no saint in the Old Testament experienced the both. They tell you, walk, all these people in the Old Testament never had a spiritual. Uh, human spirit. When they tell you that the, the only way you can have a relationship with God is having a human spirit. Of course, we're born spiritually dead. So what, what happens when you can believe? You get a human spirit. So you can have a relationship with God. You read the anthropology of walking. That's why unbelievers can't stand, understand the word of God. They don't have a human spirit. The Old Testament, uh, let's see, until, uh, uh, the Old Testament, Psalm 22, 30, 31, told Nicodemus, it could not take place till after John 3, 14. No, he was wondering why he didn't understand. God didn't, Christ was wondering why he didn't understand. He has to have a human spirit. He can't understand things about without a human spirit. Let me get back here and see if something missed here. Uh, I'm going to go back here. Uh, Okay, yeah, okay, it was point seven. End the page. Nothing happened to Abraham when he believed God. He just said he had imputation of righteousness. This is what he, Kyle just quoted. Nothing happened to Abraham when he believed God. He didn't get saved. Nothing happened to Abraham when he believed God. He said he got righteous. He got God's righteousness. Something did happen to him. Absolutely nothing. Wait a second. Wait a second. Abraham was not justified two years after he got his imputed righteousness. Something did happen to him. He got imputed righteousness. There you go. I'm making it up. You got to be a lunatic to write this stuff. He was not regenerated. Then how is he saved? How is he having a human spirit? How is he talking to God? How is he having a relationship with God? How is he praying to God? How can he understand God? And become a friend of God? Now we have cases where God would speak to unbelievers, like in the case of Pharaoh in Genesis 20. 
But here Abraham is growing. And that's why you see Genesis 22, he becomes a friend of God. There's a growth. He becomes more and more mature and puts more and more trust in God, like Job did. He was not spiritually circumcised. Well, we know that. He was not put into Christ's body. Yeah, we know that. His sins were not taken away. Yeah, we know that. They were covered. His sins were not paid for. He was, he was, he was not adopted into God's family. Yes, he was adopted into God's family. He just wasn't a son of God. And his soul resided in paradise until, you mean Abraham's bosom, until Matthew 27, 52, 50. Yeah, yeah, we know that. And Old Testament, New Testament salvation are the same, are they? Well, they're not identical. But many, but much, many of the things are the same. Some of the things are the same. So he jumps from the idea of not being identical to the idea that nothing is the same. They are not even the same on the grace before Abraham. The just who live by faith in the Old Testament did not even live by fa the faith that you have under Romans 117.5.1. A liar, you have to have a good memory. Here we go. So the liars forget about the Habakkuk's quotation. It's misquoted. It's misquoted. It's misquoted. It's misquoted. He makes, you know, a little thing there. John admitted his, from his faith in Habakkuk. You know how Habakkuk is talking about it? Saving, by, someone would save himself by his faith. Physical salvation. He would run. He would believe what was happening and run. From the destruction that was coming upon the city. <clears throat> the Bible tells me that the Old Testament faith was manufactured. And thus all the mentions of faith in Hebrews 11 demonstrating the Old Testament faith are only illustrations of in individual actions based on believing what God said. They applied faith. And that's why they could do the actions. They're not illustrations of anything. <laughs> that's what they did. This is identical to Abraham's faith in what God said. Yes, well, he's part of it. He's in that uh, he, uh, uh, he was alive when you turn to the actual passage in the Old Testament, read them, you suddenly become aware of the fact faith had little or nothing more to do with anyone's eternal salvation. Look at this. <laughs> no faith had nothing to do with anybody's eternal salvation in the Old Testament. For the one that it comes twice, oh, for the one that it comes twice in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 32 20 and back in 2 4, because the word faith doesn't show up, but the word trust is all over the place. Word trust is all over the place, but because the word faith doesn't show up, the word faith they mean they were saved by faith. When it does, one that uh, one time it is emphasizes someone's lack of faith. Okay, in the walk, your faith is given to you according to Ephesians two eight nine. No, our faith isn't given to us in Ephesians two eight nine. See how stupid this guy is. Oh, <laughs> you know what's given us Ephesians two eight nine? Grace. Grace, not the faith. Go to Ephesians 2. And even Calvin got this right, by the way. And you had to quick you uh, and you had to quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the power of the air. The, uh, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. But God, in his writ, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. And that's what he gives us, the gifts of faith in the human wounds. It wasn't the faith he gave us, it's the grace. The grace of salvation. By grace are ye saved. The faith is not the one that's given to us. And this is known by many, you can look at many commentaries, people. 
and he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus, through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, right? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What's the gift of God? The grace. This free gift. The grace. Not the, not the, not the faith. He doesn't give us the faith. He gave us the grace so we could have the faith. That's Ephesians 2.8. Now he's talking about it. It's the grace. You look at the whole chapter. It isn't, it isn't the faith that's given to us. What's given to us is the ability, the chance, the opportunity to believe. Because, it was, because of the grace of God, the free gift of God. So he's still botched up. There you go. Here you go. Here's your great guy. So I'll stop here. I'll look at we'll do part three tomorrow. I'm gonna there's some verses in there I'm gonna hit. I had somebody in uh Mark and Moore, Phineas and other guys they apply with and uh, deal with that. You know, Phineas is another one that's get towards it. They love looking at the righteousness of Phineas. It's uh I think it's a little bit 103. Just have this Phineas, 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 HR. Phineas. A one oh six. One oh six. Thirty one six thirty. Then set up Phineas and executed, executed judgment, so the plague plague was stayed, and that was counted unto him for righteousness until all until all generations forevermore. Now, would you believe that everyone saved after Phineas's line was saved after that? No, it's blessing. The zeal of Phineas by doing what he did. Meant that his line would be blessed. Didn't mean that everybody in his line was going to be saved. But they all go look at Phineas. He Phineas. He was counted unto righteousness. But we'll go on. Uh, he's got about the next into tribulation. And, you know, this is insanity, people. This little group that twists words. Can't understand a standing in state. They take the idea because of the differences in the church age and the Old Testament. And think because there are differences that they have to throw out everything in the Old Testament. There are no similarities. Uh, they put the word identical. 
Everybody thinks these guys are identical and saved. No one says they're identical. What the walk, what happens when the Holy Spirit came, and, uh, you know, when we get saved, now differences, differences in us uh, in the church age. But it doesn't mean anything. Nothing happened to the Old Testament. Nothing happened to Abraham. <laughs> but he was saved. Nothing happened to Abraham, but he was saved. <laughs> okay. Oh, you see him Peter righteous. Absolutely nothing happened. But he's even pretty right. Oh, well, 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 there's no, you know, James, Book of Hebrews, yeah, there, you know, because all these other groups said there's no eternal security in Hebrews and James, we got to accept that. And therefore, yeah, yeah, it's just the 12 tribes of Israel. They have no eternal security. Uh, Hebrews is the Hebrews, you see that. They have no eternal security. Tribulation saints have no eternal security. No one has eternal security but the church age. That's what, they, that's what they want you to believe. No one has eternal security but the church age. That's what the Ruckman group, this whole nonsense, nonsensical nutcases, I want you to believe. Oh, every time this is cut off, it means they lost their salvation. Oh, you're dying your sins. You're going to be cut off. You're going to lose your salvation. Ezekiel. And say, oh, Ezekiel, see, the righteous man would, you know, be uh, received, uh, his righteousness would be forgotten. And, uh, you know, his iniquity is remembered. And then if everyone turns and his iniquity is forgotten, his righteousness is remembered. It's a walk. What do we deal with those verses? The problem is don't be deceived by these guys. You double-tongued tongue liars. Actually telling people to be saved by works in any dispensation. And then rest, resting scriptures. Distorting scriptures. Phineas, this is your Phineas, look at that, you know, oh, look at that. And it was counted on them for all generations, oh yeah, everyone was saved in his line because of what he did, saved, eternally saved. That must have been some type of eternal security, if you want that one. But that was their blessings, they'd be blessed because of what Phineas did. So I'll stop here and put this up. Amen, thank you.